Sounds good. All right. Um, so I see uh, this is Greg, I know by the way. Alha, Chris, Dan, Hart, and Nathan. Any of the other TSC members joined yet? Hi, Todd. This is Greg. Can you hear me? Hey, Greg. Welcome. Hi, sorry. I was struggling with the, uh, the new mute. No worries. And it looks like Mick's here now as well. So we are at quorum. Awesome. Okay. Morning, everybody. Afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, uh, okay, so for today's agenda, we have our usual um, discussion of the upcoming Hackfests. Hopefully that can be brief. Um, a reminder about the internship program. Um, actually, can we, we, we will move the discussion of uh, leaving incubation to the end. Um, so then we have quarterly updates from uh, requirements and then from cello um, we have um, a project proposal renewal from caliper uh, as recommended from the um, out of the uh, performance and scaling working group and uh, and then we can finalize our discussion about whether or not you need to be out of incub pardon me out of incubation before you hit 1.0 so uh, any other items for the agenda? It looks pretty packed. Okay. Um, so just very briefly in terms of the Hackfest planning, I think there's a question about whether or not we want to have a Hackfest prior to Amsterdam. And I just don't see how we can squeeze one in at this point. Uh, Todd, do we have any, even any um, uh, offers? Uh, no, uh, before we did that, I think we wanted to see if there was a hunger for it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just think quarterly, you know, this is sort of the direction we were heading in there. Um, and we had our first quarter and technically June is still second quarter. So, um, I think, I think we should stick with that. Okay. Um, and then just a reminder again, the registration is up for June. Uh, in Amsterdam, hosted by our friends at ABN and Enro, uh, and a, a draft agenda. And I think, again, the, the thinking is we'd like to, you know, really sort of get the agenda fleshed out beforehand so people know what they're, um, uh, what they're in for. So um, I think we'll spend some cycles uh, in May to try and lock that down. Um, the internship program is up and accepting applications. So, um, uh, you know, we've, we've uh, got some really good proposals out there. So if you know of any student interns that would like to uh, work with us this summer, please uh, give them a heads up and, and get them to register. Okay, um, quarterly update. So requirements, who do we have on to do the requirements work group? Should be Clive, I believe, right, Tracy? That's right. Um, okay, so I'm not hearing anything. So uh, let's do then cello. I think Tong is on. Let's do cello first and give Clive a. If he if he comes on, he can. Okay. Hey, Chris. thanks, Chris. Thanks, so. Tom. Uh, yeah, I assume you guys have the link, right? Uh, you can open up. Should I share my screen instead? Um, the link is in the rocket chat. The right, right. I mean, everybody else can just go ahead, click on that link and so you can see the cello project update page. I'll go over this very quickly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, so uh, Cello project is uh, very, uh, the community is very active. Uh, things mostly happen on the uh, Rocket Chat and Cello uh, channel. Um, we normally have a lot of uh, questions, ask how to use the project. Uh, sometimes we have some generic questions regarding Fabric as well. Uh, I think the, the maintainers uh, normally uh, uh, respond to those questions uh, very quickly. Um, 
Um, so that's uh, that's a good thing. Uh, we also use the channel to discuss new ideas, uh, features, um, uh, so that we can gather some requirement or uh, new work items for the project. We start to have this uh, weekly uh, Friday meeting um, last week. We feel that uh, it's uh, important to have the cello a channel on rocket.chat, but also important to uh, actually have, uh, you know, uh, voice uh, conversation. So all the uh, maintainers and uh, whoever interested in Cello can get on the Friday uh, weekly call so we can hear each other's voice and uh, uh, discuss stuff for the uh, project. Uh, most of the uh, patch set get reviewed uh, within 24 hours. Uh, so we responded to those uh, patch set uh, uh, quickly. Uh, that's a good thing. So in terms of issues, uh, we don't have any urgent issues uh, from the uh, project point of view. Uh, we, we are planning to have some kind of a, like a test test the net um, for the fabric. If the Linux Foundation can provide uh, some machines for us, uh, that would be nice. We can set up uh, uh, older system then other uh, parties can join. So this is more like a, a playground. So people can start uh, sort of uh, see how uh, things work. Uh, new features uh, can be uh, presented. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. Uh, if Linux Foundation can provide some uh, public facing machines, that would be uh, very nice. So that's sort of like a request. Um, really? I think, Tom, if you, if you want to do that, just use the infra channel. Um, and Ryan, Jessica, and others will help out. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll try that. Uh, releases, uh, we, we, we had the two releases already, and we're planning to do um, the 0 0.8.0 0, uh, as soon as Fabric get released, uh, we'll release our own as well. <clears throat> Um, overall activities, I think I pretty much addressed that already. Um, current plan, uh, ensure the release of a 0 0.8.0. 0. Uh, now, uh, look, after this release, we'll, we'll plan to uh, integrate Fabric Composer uh, to a cello. So the idea is that after you um, run the command, uh, you set up the fabric network. Uh, you also have the composer uh, ready to go. So a user can um, basically use the browser to uh, hit the composer and start to develop their own uh, uh, business networks. So that's the idea. So we sort of provide like an end to end, you know, as everything's set up, you immediately start doing your own uh, business network. So that probably will be a pretty big uh, item for Cello. Uh, we also wanted to create uh, some video um, uh, to help users to understand the project. Uh, so we plan to have a little mini series from the like a very basic idea what Cello does to some advanced features. Uh, we also wanted to update some document so the e user can get a user, have an easier time to start using the project. We have currently uh, three maintainers, uh, two from IBM, one from Oracle. Um, so we can cover both uh, North America and the Asia Pacific areas. 
we basically practice um, the common, you know, uh, uh, rules for the open source community. Uh, the people contribute most uh, will be nominated as maintainer. Uh, answer most of the questions, re review most of the uh, past set uh, will get nominated. Currently we have um, 25 contributors. Um, we, in the last, from last December, uh, I think, uh, we have total of uh, 62 patch set merged. Uh, that's, um, I mean, I consider that pretty active. So a uh, lot of uh, cello developers also participate in the local uh, meetup and uh, other uh, events such as Hackfast to promote the project. Uh, and help uh, people to use fabric. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the updates I wanted to give to you guys. Questions? Thanks, Tom. Any questions for Tom? Comments, concerns? Yeah, hey, this is Brian Bellendorf. Um, it's great to hear that there were 25 um, other uh, contributors um, that you could point to. Um, what do you think uh, we could do to encourage them to be um, uh, even more active uh, in the project? Mm. Well, I think if you users have um, uh, have more interest in the fabric product, they will probably come to the uh, channel more often. Um, we have more features we want to add. I think people will contribute. Um, uh, where Brand, this is Baha. I, I, I think you pro have proposed a very well question and uh, it's also suitable for all the projects. And uh, from my opinion, uh, there are several things we can improve to uh, encourage more uh, developers. Uh, the first one, I guess we need to um, improve the quality of the documentation to help those uh, new beginners and uh, take uh, and set up the project quickly. And uh, for the second one, I guess uh, we can try to help um uh those very active and uh, develop uh, active and uh, core developers to help to uh, recognize their contributions like uh, in our local meetups um we usually uh, invited those who is very active in the uh, code developer to be a speaker in the meetup and to help uh, give uh, tutorials to others and uh, also, certainly, I would like to hear uh, people's suggestion on this question. Yeah, I, I would echo that. Um, and that's the part of the reason why I think in the current plan section, we wanted to create some more uh, videos and update documents. Um, that's an area that we wanted to put a bit more focus on to help the people to uh, get on the project easily. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it, it really applies, you know, sort of um, to, to a lot of the uh, tools, I think, Brian, getting other people to contribute is largely going to be a function of um, people that are using it and have an itch to scratch, right? Um, uh, and so I think some of it is awareness, some of it is documentation, some of it is, um, you know, we're still sort of early days with some of these things. And uh, I think the more people start adopting uh, and, and using these things in, uh, in anger, as they say, uh, then they start finding things that they want to improve or fix and they start getting involved. So. Yep, good point. 
I wonder if there's a, a way to widen the audience. Is it still uh, an objective for cello to expand out of uh, fabric and, and uh, provide capabilities for the other infrastructure projects in Hyperledger? Um, Bao Hua, can you this question for quite a while? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. As we have discussed in uh, in the the Hyperledger summit, I guess um, Cello from its uh, scope is all always open to all the Hyperledger blockchain frameworks. Besides Fabric, we do have a plan to support like uh, Sotos and uh, Yoha, and we have created the uh, Jira issue. However, I, I had to I had to admit, to admit that. Um, we do not have uh, too much resources uh, on the on the support and the Yoha projects, but uh, I certainly I, I I would like to see um, if you can give any advice on that. I will be appreciated. Actually, I uh, I have much more expertise in fabric, so <laughs> in a cello, just I'm uh, miss uh, muggling things, means try to learning those things. If uh, I will be become a uh, expert on those things, then definitely I will contribute. <laughs> and apart from that, uh, my, my um, uh, this this is my research area, hyperledger. It will be very helpful for me if uh, we will get any internship program online or offline. Uh, so any any means, I am able to come China also. <laughs> so if uh, if you would like to utilize my work. Definitely, because uh, from institute we getting a stipend, so there is no issue regarding uh, means uh, money. So just we want to learn and to work on this uh, hyperledger project, uh, this cello project. So first type of things with me. Okay, thanks, Amit, and uh, we are very glad that uh, um, we can hear from. Uh, users like you, uh, a new beginner of uh, hyperledger technology that you think that the uh, channel is helpful. And uh, certainly, yeah, we, we would like to hear more that uh, you want to channel to help improve. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, correct. Okay. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? If not, is um, is Clive on for requirements? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. Um, I think then we should move on to the uh, proposal for Caliper. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, hi, Mark Wagner here. Um, hi, Mark. Wanted to, I wanted to say that the Caliper folks have been working with the Performance and Scale Working Group hand in hand, um, contributing a lot to our efforts as well. And that, um, you know, we've passed the rough consensus. There are no objections to the last two calls to us coming forward with Caliper um, and getting it in as a project. Awesome. So um, they have the recommendation from the Performance and Scale Working Group. Um, and I think the Caliper folks will drive you through that work now. And I actually have to drop because I have to go to a doctor's appointment. But I think Dan and Vipin can handle <clears throat> WG questions and the Caliper folks can handle the Caliper work. Super. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. So is Victor on? Uh, Chris, Victor is uh, not online, but uh, we have a very important the developer for caliper is uh how june how june should oh, okay. be online super okay how june are you there yeah 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 i'm here and oh, uh, also, okay. also i want to introduce stephen who is also from huawei and uh, he can help to introduce caliper the current progress and if if you have any Technical pro questions, I can help to answer the question. So, Stephen, are you here? I 
I don't hear him, but uh, how you, why don't you just go ahead and... and oh, uh, sorry, sorry, hello? Can you yep. hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry, mute, fumble there. Um, yeah, so thanks, Hedger, and thanks to Mark for the, for the intro. As, as he said, um, Caliper has spent the last while uh, support, well, well, two things, you know, we took the feedback from TSC the last time um, to go work with PSWG on some of the metrics definition, and that's, that's produced some good results. Um, I think there were a couple of other comments the last time uh, the proposal came to TSC and one was on representation um, just to try to build some diversity in the community and, and we think we've been, been pretty successful at that. So at the moment, uh, Huawei, IBM, uh, folks from Soramitsu and also the University of Budapest have all been pretty actively involved uh, in Caliper. Um, and, and as always, we'd, we'd sort of encourage and welcome as many people as possible to, to join it. Um, we, we did post the latest uh, updated Caliper proposal document, I think both in the invite and in Rocket Chat, if, if people want to, to browse through that. The, the various teams uh, are, are, are listed there uh, for representation. Uh, and then the other comment that we'd received was just uh, some uh, concerns maybe about the focus of Caliper or that people would take it to be in some sense a uh, assessment tool if you like or uh, in some way would be used to sort of you know bash different projects and say my blockchain is better than your blockchain um, and I suppose from 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 our standpoint certainly for, for Huawei and, and more generally for for the Caliper team, we're, we're not interested in that. It's it's not our intention that Caliper be used as an authoritative tool um, to benchmark or to provide comparison between uh, different Hyperledger projects. We, we kind of see two users for Caliper. One, obviously, the Hyperledger projects, you know, framework projects themselves, that those dev teams would find Caliper useful in, in their ongoing work for internal uses to, to get kind of relative benchmarks as they're, as they're working through their own roadmaps and performance improvements. And, and to some extent for, for other companies or individuals to use it to evaluate the tools. But I think as, as we all appreciate, performance is only one aspect of a decision. It depends if your use case needs those performance or if it's public or a private chain. And there's, there's just many reasons why you would choose one, one tool set over another. Um, so we just wanted to be really clear about that and again put that kind of as the intention and disclaimer at the start of the caliper paper that we're not trying to provide uh, authoritative results on behalf of, of Hyperledger and, and publish results of the benchmarking. Um, the rest of the document then just brings it kind of up to date on the progress report through. Sorry, is there a question? No, I think somebody just needs to go on mute. Uh, yep, so then the progress report, just to catch up, clarified some of that and brought Fabric up to 105, uh, got Sawtooth support up to 0 0.8 and the latest uh, developer release of Aroha. Um, and if there's specific questions on those, as, as Hojun said, we can, we can take some questions on that. Uh, we've then folded in the, the output from the PSWG, so the the results and the reports that Caliper produces now, you know, correspond to the terminology and the definitions from the metrics document of PSWG. So, success rate, good put, throughput, latency, um, system metrics, etc., are all captured. Um, and then we have a little bit of a roadmap ahead because this will definitely be, a, a, you know, work in progress and an ongoing project. Um, we want to build in more of the PSWG definitions see are there other uh, hyperledger projects uh, either frameworks or tools that we could use and um, we've, we've kind of an obvious eye on uh, cello because that would be that would be really interesting to find ways to support that and use cello to orchestrate some of the deployments when when people are running uh, caliper tests against uh, tools uh, and, and just try to support the kind of cross-pollination of those uh, those tools so I'll stop there and just see if there's if there's any questions. That clearly, there's there's more to do on Caliper, uh, but you know, we've kind of done our best to clarify the scope, uh, broaden the team, 
and we'd, we'd appreciate the support from TSC to, to move forward with that as a project. Thanks, Stephen. Um, any questions for Stephen and Haojun? So, um, I'd just like to hear um, from Dan and Vipin about the engagement between Caliber and, uh, and the working group. I know that was one of the issues originally. Yeah, this is Dan. Um, so when when Caliper was coming for proposal, that turned out uh, the, the first time to be a little bit awkward timing with having just launched a performance working group where our objective there was to try to at least get to uh, common verbiage uh, or common metrics on, on what we meant by performance and what's relevant in this space versus other spaces. So we wanted to make sure that if, if there was a uh, performance harness out there that it, it wasn't sending conflicting messages or wasn't producing something in conflict with the direction of that working group. So what we wanted originally was for that working group to quickly produce metrics and then kind of get out of the way of Caliper or other projects. As I imagine the architecture working group can relate to uh, and maybe some of the other working groups is it's uh, a fairly lengthy process to, to get all the thinking in place and then get, get the document organized. So what we decided a, a few weeks back in, in one of these working group meetings was it might be more efficient all around to let Caliper evolve alongside these metrics definitions. So I think we are close to definitions in, in the working group, but one of the way to check to make sure if, if we're creating metrics that are measurable, that are useful, is to have Caliper see if it's feasible to be implemented within that tool. Uh, so it's it's going to, I think, evolve at this point to be a bit of a, a back and forth between Caliper and the working group where where both of those efforts are enhanced by the other's activity. That sounds like a really positive relationship. Good. So this is on Ohio, guys. Uh, I, I totally agree with this. And, you know, I would feel very bad if we were to push back again on Caliper because they clearly have done what we asked them to do, which was to establish this working relationship with the performance working group. And, uh, they, they, you know, on a practical level, I, it would be good to highlight the link. I mean, in the HIP document, there's like a text that refers to the performance working group. Is there a document that could be linked to that kind of shows that, you know, this is an implementation of the outcome of the working group? I think it would be good to kind of formalize that and, and put a reference link so that I can follow and see where those metrics are defined. And, you know, I can probably search for it on the site, but it'd be convenient if there was a link. But other than that, I think this, is, this sounds like great, uh, very healthy uh, work going on there, so. I would like to add, add something. Actually, I have a IBM a partner. So they have a means uh, in a, uh, resources they have given a red book uh, related to blockchain, whatever they implemented. So very well documented and very uh, well, uh, very good, uh, good uh, manner. They prepared a video means how they implement, how it's actually work. This their hyperledger in fabric uh, with their scenario. So in this manner, is it possible for you uh, to give some uh, video lecture related to uh, this project so that uh, for end user, for a new developer, they are able to understand what they what you are supposed to exactly looking for using this uh, project. So such type of things I'm uh, looking for. Am I right or is there anything you have to add something? Hello? 
Yes, I cannot believe. Uh, I, I, sorry, I didn't. Uh, are you, were, you, were you asking us a question or? Yeah, I'm uh, asking a question. Means in a means in a IBM blockchain, whatever they implemented using Fabric, so, so very well documented. And uh, if they prepared a tutorial, means how this their Fabric is actually work in real scenario with four nodes. They are taking four nodes and uh, making a hyperledger communication using their uh, environment. In the same manner, if we are go for this uh, project uh, caliber. So, is it possible to see uh, their working uh, in a tutorial fashion? So, such type of things I'm looking for um, because uh, this uh, this project caliper project a little bit I'm confusing. I mean, I'm going it might be in a wrong direction. I don't know. So, such type of things I'm actually looking for. Yeah, so I think, I mean, you know, absolutely all of the projects could use uh, better and more documentation. Um, and then actually, Brian, to your earlier point, you know, how can more people get involved or how do we, you know, documentation is equally as important as code. And sometimes it's also one of the um, easier ways to start engaging in a project because um, uh, you are basically writing down and, and sharing with others what you're learning as you're learning about the project through the documentation. So um, it's, it's a good way to sort of get, get rolling. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily expect that or, or make it a prerequisite for a project to have, you know, fully, uh, uh, you know, sort of produ uh, production level uh, documentation uh, for its incubation. Um, and I do, I do tend to agree with what Arno was saying a little bit earlier about, you know, they've, they've stepped up and they've done exactly what we've asked them to do, if not more. And um, I, I, you know, I think that, you know, certainly the, the partnership with the working group has been uh, productive and a positive one, I think, as Dan and, and Mark both uh, suggested. And so I think it's it's probably time that we take a vote. Uh, yeah, yeah, Unless yeah, anybody has further concerns or questions. I would like like to add some one one more thing. If you teach me, Miss, how your project actually work, so I will make a production ready tutorial for uh, other guys, so that they may be uh, easily for them to contribute on those, but in, on this particular project, like a fabric so, uh, or saw so, so so such type of things I'm able to contribute. If you teach me how this project actually work and what means with code and their running example, so that I can make my own production related to this project. Yep. So such type of condition I'm willing to take, uh, give for this project. Would you like to add something? Well, I don't see any objection, Chris, so we can go ahead with the vote. And yeah. yes, I mean, you can contact the developers and yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Todd. Okay, so to Oops. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sure thing. So um, let's just do a quick vote. So for the uh, nine TSC members that are on, all in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> all right. Subject. A any oh. abstaining? Any opposed? All right, that That's passes unanimous unanimously. Vote. Great, thank you very much. And congratulations to the Caliper team on uh, becoming the newest uh, project. And um, I, I think the next steps then would be for, you know, Stephen and, and, and Haojun and, and Victor to contact Rai and he can help get you onboarded from a GitHub, Garrett, Jira perspective. <clears throat> Great, Chris, thanks. Thanks for that. And uh, yeah. thanks everyone thank for, for the support. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, look, look forward to, to this. Cheers. Awesome. Great. Thanks a lot. And okay. I'll go ahead and send out uh, information to you on how to get uh, uh, started getting that into the GitHub of Hyperledger. Yeah. So. Thanks, Tracy. Great. Tracy, yep. thanks. I'll, I'll follow up with you. Yep. Great. Okay.
Um, last call for Clive and the requirements working group. Okay, Todd, I guess we'll have to defer that for next week. Yeah, I emailed him and didn't get anything back. Uh, oh. So I think that he just missed it. Okay, thank you, Marta. Um, okay, so we're back to the discussion about um, uh, leaving incubation before a 1.0 or, you know, whether it's a prerequisite or, or a strong suggestion or, um, or not a requirement at all. So um, I think, we, you know, and again, I, I don't want to, you know, necessarily put words in people's mouths, but I think that the, um, you know, that there are arguments uh, on both sides, as they say, uh, to be made for, you know, the fact that I think there are likely to be projects that maybe don't necessarily, um, uh, you know, have as broad a, uh, uh, a community around them as others, and that will always be the case. And we shouldn't necessarily penalize a project um, that has value and that is, uh, you know, wants to sort of establish that in fact there's some relevance here and you know they'd like to sort of make that 1.0 statement about you know the 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 the, the uh, quality and the um uh, you know the completeness of uh, a project um you know oftentimes you know being at a zero dot something uh uh, version can sort of be an, an inhibitor to people sort of picking it up and kicking the tires even um, because they're waiting for it to be a little bit more mature. So, um, so you know, and again, there's a bit of a chicken and egg um, between uh, people using uh, something and then turning back and contributing as uh, I think was evident with cello, for instance. So, you know, there's that aspect of the question. And then there's also the, well, but if you put in the effort to, um, you know, to satisfy the criteria for exiting incubation um, and shouldn't teams be required to do that, we wouldn't necessarily want Hyperledger to be um, uh, abused as a community for, you know, going to 1.0 um, without necessarily really engaging um, and, 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 and attempting to embrace the community um, that we have here. So, um, and, and essentially just using the name uh, to brand some largely proprietary project. So, I, I, you know, again, I think there's, 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 um, there's arguments on both sides. Um, and, uh, I don't, you know, others can, can weigh in here. You know, we have another 15 or so minutes. Um, but I, I would hope that we could maybe wrap up this conversation and, and make a decision. And if we do decide one way or the other, then I think we should then leverage that to update our, um, you know, m make a specific update in the project life cycle to either, you know, make it a criteria for, um, uh, I should say to make to update the project lifecycle document to say that exiting incubation is a prerequisite or not, just so that it's clear. Um, and then if it is, uh, uh, then we should. Well, anyway, we 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 should just update our our, our documentation to 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 accommodate that. So I, I think the, you know, there is general agreement that in the incubation exit criteria, there's a set of criteria that really, you know, pertain to organizational aspect of the project that we all feel like, yeah, this, you know, to qualify for one zero release, you ought to have all of that taken care of, things like the CI, the test, all this stuff. And then there was this other aspect that seemed to be the, the real problem is, you know, the, this diversity, you know, how broad a community do you, do you have? And so it seems like the, the options we have, you know, to address this problem is either 
we agree that people can get to one zero without getting out of incubation because they don't have this community aspect taken care of, but they're everything else. Or we, well, there are three options, I guess. Either we, we that, or we, we say, nope, Sorry, you have to get out of incubation, otherwise you don't qualify to issue a one zero. Or the third option is we water down the criteria to get out of incubation to say, well, in some cases, even if you don't have a very broad community, you might still get out of incubation and therefore you'd be allowed to get to active and, and qualify to a one zero. I, I made a proposal on the TSC channel, an email, I guess uh, as well that maybe there's a middle ground which is we allow people to if you're an active status you automatically qualify to you know for one zero release but if you don't have, are in act, if you're not in active status then you can essentially it's a, it's almost like an appeal to the TSC to still you know be able to release a one zero so if you're not in active status, it would the one zero release would be at the discretion of the TSC, and the TSC would then do an evaluation, make sure everything else is taken care of, and on that basis could possibly say, yeah, okay, fine. We understand you can build a big, big community, but you you have all the other things taken care of. Therefore, you can go ahead and release a one zero project. Is the problem the size of the community or do we not want to vote for every project? Is that, is that a concern? So that you go to the TSC and appeal and say, hey guys, you know, my friends are on vacation, I still want to go one zero. <laughs> is, it, is it something like that? No, or, no, it was really more the diversity of the community in the exit criteria. We have this notion that you have built up a community and there's not like one entity in full control and the only one contributors, right? Yeah. So that would have been like, you know, uh, Hyperledger, Fabric initially, it was all IBMers for the most part. There were a, bunch, uh, a couple of people from uh, DHL, but that's, you know, pretty much all IBMers. And we had to grow the community and get people from other organizations on board. So effectively what this, since, since becoming an active project requires a vote from the TSC anyway, effectively what this does, it just gives the TSC a chance to review anything that goes to a 1.0 release. I mean, that effectively is what we're, what we're saying, right? It at least yeah, I think that's a good simplification of, of that. Yeah. Yeah, but you apply for different outcome though, right? In one case today, you only apply to get out of incubation, move to active. In this case, you would have to, the option to apply to release a one zero, even if you're not moving to active. Yeah, I, I, I understand, um, or no, I'm, I'm just um, suggesting yeah. that what this does is it gives the TSC at least some visibility into the project and an opportunity yes. to review its maturity, whether we review that maturity as a transition from um, incubation to active or we review that maturity as a transition to 1.0 release, at least gives us a chance to, to be on board with with where the project is. And, and that's the part I like about this, mostly. Yeah, so Nick, actually that may be the, you know, may, maybe that's just the, um, the, the ticket here is that we just sort of say, you know, there are um, going to 1.0 or exiting incubation requires passing through and a review by the TSC. Um, and, and that sort of covers, because then essentially it makes it a decision, uh, a subjective decision essentially by the TSC as to whether or not they felt that either the maturity of the code or the community is, you know, is suitable enough for, uh, for, for, for reaching that particular milestone, uh, whether it's exiting incubation or not. And, and we can choose um, you know, to maybe handle both at the same time or to, um, uh, you know, to say, well, but we still think you need to work on X, Y, Z, right? Um, I'm just judging by how much hard time we gave the Caliper guys back in the day. You remember, I was, like with Mark, when he was there trying, he said, no, we want the requirements in and this and that. And actually it did work well. 
So I'm happy to have some authority, right, as the TSC, and, and, and actually, and we are all happy to vote them in. We are all proud of the work that was done, and so I, th I think it's not bad to to approach the TSC from a time to time. Uh, just just my view, because it allows us to also guide people, right, so that they don't waste time. Mm. Or actually, what exactly do we want from them? And then we see uh, we can all be proud, saying, "Hey, look, this is exactly what we wanted. Thank you very much. Go ahead, good luck." You know, and we all endorse it. Yeah, the vote for 1.0 seems like a totally reasonable thing. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Dan? Yeah, I, uh, yeah I, I totally agree. I'm not hearing any disagreement from anybody. Uh, maybe there's a, a nit we'll have to work out with the phrasing of uh, 1.0 versus uh, some other sort of GA terminology. Okay. Greg? Sorry, bubble boot. You, uh, I have no objections. Okay. Ben is, uh, is, is Ben on? I don't remember. I think Ben's out this week. Okay. All right. Well, I, I guess then I guess I'm not hearing any objections. So maybe that's what we do. We just sort of say that um, 1.0 and exiting incubation require TSC approval, uh, re, you know, review and approval, and, and leave it at that. Um, uh, and we can update the, uh, the lifecycle document accordingly. So unless there's any objection, I think I'll, I'll take the action to do that, um, you know, and present the update uh, at the next call. Hey, Chris, can I just ask a clarifying question because yeah. I, I've heard two different things and I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So mm -hmm. is that 1.0 regardless of whether you're active or incubation? I, I think it, it sounded to me like the last people were saying that 1.0 regardless of what status you're in. What do people think? I, I would think yes, but I want to make sure I'm not. So I, I agree with that, but I think that generally we would expect projects to um, become active as it hits 1.0 or sometime within the same time frame. Yeah. Um, there are exceptions to that, and I think the thing I like about this is it allows us to handle that with you know a review of the TSC without mm -hmm. having to make the rules too stringent or too... Um, uh, cookie cutter where there is variation between projects and what each project needs. Okay, so I think the answer then is yes. I'll update the document and we can vote on the update, but. Uh, we, w w the answer is yes to what? Because Tracy yes, yes, asked an or question, yes. you're answering by yes. <laughs> yes, both. I'm sorry, yes, both. <laughs> yeah, yes, Anu, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the answer is both. Yes, it's either A or B. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so I took that to be yes. The anything that's going to one dado has to have a vote from here out. Yes. It has to have a review. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's, okay. that's probably the easiest way to phrase it. And then um, I don't know if we want to make things harder on ourselves, but. Um, Figuring out, do we want to at the same time enforce this uh, Semver uh, kind of uh, labeling so that something that's claiming to be production ready is thought, uh, defined as 1.0? I thought we did that. I thought we had agreed that projects here in Hyperledger would use some uh, semantic versioning. Yeah, we did that. We did that a long time ago, but it it seems that when projects have come in they they've at times had their own versioning sequence mm -hmm. and so i think this was maybe the case for indy oh okay yeah that's correct indy was indy went to 1.0 right as we were entering uh right before we entered hyperledger uh, or kick him out near that time. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we rescind the project approval <laughs> that's right <laughs> okay um I'll, I'll, I'll look at adding some 
reinforcement there and for that. Sound good? Well, would that mean that, that Indian, if this applies to any other projects, would need to reversion? And then if that's the case, can, can folks on Indy think about uh, how bad that is, if it's so bad? I think our, our strategy here would just be to hurry up and exit incubation rather than try to reversion. <laughs> yeah, that might be easier. I can see that. Who wants to change the version number backwards? So I wouldn't go, I wouldn't necessarily say that you have to go backwards, but you should be using semantic versioning. If you were using, you know, bananas as your version number, uh, then maybe you need to rethink that. Right. Yeah. But that's not what I'm hearing. They use one zero. That's the problem, right? Yeah. But that's, it, it precedes this decision. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I totally understand. Well, and that was, that was exactly one of the difficulties on our team is that we did that one zero because we reached the first phase of feature completeness and we hit the milestone where we can't break user space anymore. Which How about we do this? this How about well we say, because I think the criteria is going to be, it's going to be the first major release of a project under the Hyperledger umbrella requires TSC approval. Does that make sense? But what does it mean, major release? Uh, well, <laughs> it means the one that you want to have the press release from Hyperledger. Nice try. <laughs> I think it means the one that you want to have the big, you know, the horns blaring, you know, dancing <laughs> on pins, heads, and, and all the things. Well, it's that release. And saying that you don't want to get only one bonus in your lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have to keep it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Does that make sense to people as opposed to one of those since we may have like Indy have a project that's already past that threshold? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. We can, we can deal with the, you know, the lack of precision. You could say, and which is like, you know, IE one zero for the project that follows some verb and, and, you know, and then well, no, it, aside it's still from that, we say that. new project need to follow this and then we would avoid the. Right. But I, I don't think we necessarily need to have people reset to 1.0. No, but I agree. Right. Okay. okay. So I, I, will, I will update and I will share it via email and people can comment on the mailing list and then we'll review and... and uh, so just for my understanding, so we allow people to go one O while they're in incubation or not? Is that? Yes. Yes. If we decide, yes. In other words, it's a decision of the this. TSC. It's not, yeah. we're not saying that we are, we're saying you need to bring your proposal to the TSC. We will review it and we'll make a decision. Right. And but we are allowing that as a possibility. That's the yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. No, cause I'm reading what, like the TSC channel and I just make sure. Mm -hmm. Like I want to do a power grab, but not this way. <laughs> okay. And, and, but again, it would also then encourage you, you could maybe do this and say, okay, we think the code is ready and we're also pretty comfortable with where we are from a community perspective and, you know, all the Garrett, Jira, all the other things are in place. And so therefore we think we're good. So, um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll update the document. I think I have a, a good um, sense of where we are. And I, I don't hear anybody objecting generally to this, this course. So. Please, you can always email a diff, right? So we can all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. So that's a diff. All right. Given that, I think we're at end of job. Thanks, everyone. And uh, talk to you all next week, hopefully. And um, we'll see you soon. Oh, and congrats to Caliper. Thank you. Yes, of course. Yeah, congrats, congrats, Caliper. Bye. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks again, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.